Yeah. So I want to know what your earliest experience is with the um, desegregation crisis, I guess people call it, right? Oh, it, it was definitely it was a, a crisis. crisis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, well, yeah. there was a lot of harbor, I guess, it didn't start with the beginning of the school year. There was a lot of talk, a lot of anxiety for everybody in my age group, um, especially the parents, about taking kids out of their neighborhood mm -hmm. from a school that they could walk to, that ostensibly the parents could walk to as well, and putting them on a bus and taking them to the other side of town. Um, on both sides, I think it was considered like the bad side of town. Everybody was afraid of their kids being so far away. And they felt like they were getting thrown into a situation that they had no control over. Mm -hmm. And so there was talk of this, harbingers of this for, I don't know, maybe six months. And so... So you're 13? Yeah, I'm yeah. 12 or 13. Entering what grade? Uh, I was entering um, ninth grade, I guess. Yeah. And, no, actually, middle was, school, right? Yeah, middle school. So seventh or eighth grade, probably. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so the summer before, there's a lot of like, yeah, Tessie. Oh, man, <laughs> well, it was where where did your did your mom know where you were going to go to school? Well, that's the thing. Um, I was in a different situation from most of the kids in my neighborhood. I went to, my, because we had this forewarning that this was going to happen, my parents got, had my brother and I take um, exams to go to um, schools that were not involved with desegregation. Would that be Boston Latin Boston Academy? Latin, yeah. yeah. And so, and we both got into one of the exam schools. So we were bust, but it was by choice. And... We, so we had that little bit of remove from the day-to-day -day dealings. But the fact that I grew up in South Boston, right. I was a block and a half away from Did South Boston. Did you have Boston. friends who you were going to be going to a different school with that were like, we thought we were going to go to middle school together, right? Um, no, I had been going to like advanced schools okay. since like fifth grade, fourth and fifth grade. So I had already been taken away from my neighborhood Ah. schools and whatnot. I never went to the local schools. Interesting. Yeah. So you already had neighborhood friends that were separate from school friends. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that yeah. happens. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, a lot of my neighborhood friends went to the advanced school as well. Interesting. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And the thing I remember most throughout all of this the word that comes to my mind is fear. Mm. Everybody was working out of fear, responding out of fear, fear of new places, fear of people that were different from us, fear from what was going to happen every day to their children or to us. And it was... Just, yeah, fear of change, fear of everything. And I think that that did a lot, that had a lot to do with what happened uh, while all this was going on. There was, you, you said you don't really know an awful lot about it. No. Okay. Um, there was a tremendous amount of violence. Yeah. There was a tremendous amount. How of did the news get delivered to your family that this was happening? Um, I don't remember that. Did you guys sit around a TV or something and you were like, oh, my God? Um, I don't know. No. Um, or, or just murmur, like rumors, you know, I, word of mouth. I think it was word of mouth. Um, the fact that, you know, my mother, Rosalie, was a crossing guard. She was involved in she, education. So, yeah, so. exactly. And she was the crossing guard for my grade school. So... 
That's cute. She, yeah, she took that job so that she could be close to us. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't really appreciate it at the time, Lord knows. But um, <laughs> it's like, ma. But, um, and so she stayed as the crossing guard for that grade school mm-hmm. after we graduated, after we started going to other schools and whatnot. And I remember it being such a surreal situation that this place, this grade school that I had gone to and that had been such a a happy place for me turned into a source of fear, a source of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, you know, I was old enough to, to understand what was going on, but not to really understand the undercurrent, the whys of why they were doing it. I just knew that everybody was freaking out, and what did that look like? Like, how did um, your mother's fear manifest? Right? Like, uh, what did it? Yeah. What was well, that like? she. The fact that we were going to a school separate from all of this, she was okay. She was okay right. with that. But it was your neighborhood that was probably yeah. Primarily yeah. affected. Yes. And there was a lot of protests. Mm-hmm. There was this organization called ROAR, R-O-A-R, Restore Our Alienated Rights. And it was, they had a little storefront on West Broadway, about you know, a few blocks from the house that I was growing up in. Mm-hmm. And so they would put out flyers. They would have, there was basically a protest every single day in front of South Boston High. Okay. And so. Who protested? Uh, what was the demographic of the people protesting? Um, like? It was my neighbors. Yeah. Um, it was parents. It was kids, the high school kids. Uh, they would get back from where they were bused from and I'll go up to South Boston High and you know, chant and turn over police cars. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of hectic. And I would go there too. But the main thing, you, know, you talk about fear. My mom wasn't quite so fearful. I was the one who was afraid. Mm-hmm. I, every day, would get off the bus that took me from my beautiful advanced exam school and it would drop me off and I would run to the grade school where my mom was at because did she work there so she was the cross guard she was the crossing guard did she also like was she a teacher there as well or some no she um she just in the mornings. And she was like stationed there th- yes. throughout the day. No, no, she was there first in thing the in the morning. morning and then the afternoon. Yes, so she okay. had the, the middle of the day to herself. Um, but I was so worried for her because I'd seen all this violence. Mm-hmm. And when these buses full of kids would come from the other neighborhoods to the grade school, they came escorted by police cars. So they, the police car was like leading them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to the school there, and away from the school. Mm-hmm. There were mounted because police. Because what was happening? Like what? Because there was that? threats of violence. There was threats of people throwing things at the buses mm-hmm. and stuff. Oh yeah, that's what I can imagine. Yeah, um, and they they also had uh, special forces. It was not just regular policemen. They had the uh, tactical police force, the TPF. Mm-hmm. And they were on horseback. They dressed more like state police. It was a little bit more, you know. Formal, official. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It was not, you know, I, my, my godfather was a policeman, mm-hmm. a Boston policeman. And so I was used to that uniform. I was used to, you know, cops and things like that. But this was very different. And I remember, because I was running everywhere, trying to get from my house to the grade school to make sure that my mom was okay, um, so I'm running, and this TPF stopped me. Why are you running? Yes. Because if you're running, you're doing uh, it you're for a reason. You're obviously doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. 
and trying to explain to him yeah. that my mom, it was, you know, I'm trying to I'm make get, sure my I'm mom's to okay. I'm to my mom. Yeah. yeah. But you're like 13. Yeah. And I remember having the fear. I mean, once again, fear. And I look back at it now and he was just fucking with me. <laughs> He was, you know, he saw this maybe. girl by herself. Yeah. I or mean, maybe he was like, she's up to something, right? You know, I didn't look like an up to something <laughs> kind of kid back then, but uh, who yeah. knows? Yeah. Who knows? Um, and yeah, it was really different. Um, and the fear of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, the racism was so stark back then. Yeah. South Boston was only white. Yeah. I mean, that's what I was picturing. Yeah. Right? As like the demographic of people protesting. Yeah. yeah. All white. They were feeling their rights were being infringed on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they... And these were like little grassroots organizations. Oh, yeah. It right? was, yeah. People's moms and things like that, running roar and things like that. Um, I had a different experience, once again, more of an outsider. Um, my mother and I, we used to teach Sunday school, kindergarten, and we had a lot of, there was a lot more diversity in the church. It was a downtown Boston church. And so I was used to having black people and Asian people and different ethnicities around. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't really understand what the fear was. Right. So, the, well, prior to this bus, the busing mm -hmm. crisis, what was your classroom? What were your classroom experiences like? Um, Mostly white. Oh, all white. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, there was never. Never Interesting. anyone and of then, color. But, but on, you know, when you're working with your mom, right, there's yes. black, black kids mm -hmm. that you're teaching Sunday school to, right? Exactly. So you were like, what's the big deal at it, 13 or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, bit? and I remember feeling like I'm supposed to be afraid of these people. I don't yeah. really get that because I'm teaching kindergarten and, you know, there's, you know, Little black kids are sitting on my lap, and we're, you know, yeah. singing and coloring and things like that. And so it didn't make a lot of sense to me, but I remember feeling like I had to be angry mm -hmm. or else I wasn't, like, part of the neighborhood. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was so confusing. And then, pr like, so after... Well, you're at the, what did the exam schools look like after this is ha like oh, happening? Right? There, well, because it was a matter of, you know, you had to pass an exam and get a certain grade, there was a much wider diversity at my school. There yeah. had always been. There's a gap, yeah. Yeah. So once again, we had people of color. We had, um, you know, I was one of the first classes that had girls in it though interesting yes it was all boys before and so it was um that was that was the disparity there I was would, a gender disparity. Yeah. yeah so that was weird but that kind of made sense to me I understood that you know the school had been all boys for I mean it was the it's the oldest grade school it's the it's the oldest high school in, in the country mm-hmm and so for a couple hundred years. Well, only the boys can go to exam schools. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's the problem, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I remember thinking that my mom was taking it not nearly seriously enough because she didn't go up to, to South Boston High. She didn't see the violence. And these were her friends that were protesting. And so I think she, and she understood. Did she have friends that were like your peers' parents, right? Like 
PT, I'm thinking like PTO PTA. style. Like. Yeah, no, no, there was no, no PTAs or anything like that. It was, but everybody grew up in, most, most people in South Boston grew up there. Right. Most people. So you knew like Sally's mom, oh, right? Oh, everybody knew everybody. Everyone knew everyone's mom. Oh, yeah. And were they like sitting at the table being like, this is crazy. Oh, yeah. And what was your mom saying? And my mom, she was also used to diversity, but she was upset because she felt the parental rights were being taken away and that, of course, people want to have their kids go to school locally. In their neighborhoods. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but the truth is that the schools in other neighborhoods were terrible. And they weren't getting the resources that the schools in South Boston were. The white schools. Exactly. Yeah. And so their thinking was, well, why don't you just raise up the quality of the schools over there? It's like, but that's still, that's not the, that's part of the point. But the main point was to get people to see, to be around different people. Yes. Different cultures, different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and be okay with that. <laughs> right? You know? Yeah, and... It's a big world uh, of man. people. Yeah, and I had loved meeting different people. Yeah, I do, like, similarly, I do recall, you know, growing up um, in the South Shore, mostly white. Yeah. When I went to UMass Boston, it was a whole world, and I... The, like transition quickly by being like I need roommates like so I'm gonna get try to get some roommates and um and so my the first ever living on my own experience that I had was living with like an Ethiopian a Kenyan and a Russian three three women wow the, all, for all from these different countries and all the same age as you all the same age as me coming to UMass Boston oh. and it, it was like a little bit of a culture shock right? yeah. I went from a high school, mostly white high school, to uh, UMass Boston where there's all these different folks of different colors and backgrounds. Um, so, like, similarly, right? Yeah, so there was a learning curve. A little in terms culture of, shock. Yeah. Mini, like, you know. Do you um, remember anything that um, they did from, I mean, were they first generation, second generation, do you know? First generation. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. their parents were from from the the old country as from it were. their yeah from yeah. their countries and they would go and travel. I think one of my roommates, like she, her family was from Kenya, but her parents lived in like America, lived in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like you know similar. Um, I just remember thinking at the time, why weren't my, you know, experiences at a younger age, more diverse. Yeah. What kind of um, situations bring people to certain areas and yeah, and learning that uh, later than I wish I had learned that earlier. Yeah. You know? Well, we weren't allowed to. I mean, yeah. it was fascinating to me when I left South Boston and started reading the history of, you know, system, systemic racism yeah. and how so specifically it was designed to keep us separate. Right. And it was so angering. It was so, you know, these people that I grew up with and loved and trusted and, you know, these are wonderful people. Why would they not want to have people of different races, it didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. And. They hadn't known any different, right? No. So. Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> the one thing. So, I mean, if this was going on right now, right? Yeah. How would you feel? Oh, what if they. In comparison to how you felt in the past. Oh, my gosh. 180. Yeah. 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 Um, because I think that I mean it, things of this nature are happening right oh, now. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, like but the fact that I don't protesting around. Yeah, police brutality, for example. Right. Um. And, well, the fact that I'm 
thinking for myself now right. is a very different thing. I consider myself blessed that I moved away from the traditional values that, you know, the, the ignorances and the one-sided history that I got then to be able to think the way I do now, to have the life I have now with the people in my life now. Um, I work at the post office in West Medford, mm -hmm. and that was one of the first um, black neighborhoods in Boston. Mm -hmm. And so I have a large black, you know, clientele, and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's, these are people who've been there for, you know, they're, that the house is handed down. Yeah. So you know, I have little old men and little old ladies, and yeah. I would never have that experience elsewhere. And one of my heroes is a, an author named Quentin Crisp, he talks about if you're comfortable in yourself, people who are different from you are a source of curiosity and not anxiety. Mm -hmm. But how you approach that curiosity, right? Y well, <laughs> is the, yeah. Well, it's like... Can be problematic. Yeah, well, well, that's the thing, though. Um, in South Boston, at that time, there was no curiosity. There was only enmity. Mm. Um, yeah, and the thing that broke, my, that, you know, really kind of cracked everything open for me, I was really not sure I was even going to tell this story because it just is so upsetting to me. It's just, um, I would go first thing in the morning to the grade school while my mom was crossing the kids, and I would go at the end of the day. And, oh, it's so hard to even say. Um, the buses would come by, and these, the kids in the buses were six, seven, eight years old. It was a grade school. And the neighborhood kids would just, I mean, throw things and yell at them. You know, and not yell and at the cops. Yelling slurs. Of yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, terrible well. Terrible things, right? That's that the that's six year old, that you're surprised six years old six pe kids of six years old, right, are interfacing with. Well, that's the thing. One day, this must have been a high school kid. Mm -hmm. um, he was standing around. And as the buses came by, he had a spear in his hand and a gorilla mask. Ugh. And he started chasing the bus. And I looked at these little kids. First off, I thought, what a fucking idiot. What a, I mean, it was so offensive. Mm -hmm. Even I knew that that was just such an ignorant thing to do. And I looked at those kids looking out, and they were just so terrified. Yeah. And they were just maybe a year or two older than the kids that I was teaching Sunday school mm -hmm. with on Sundays, like two days later. And I was like, this is just so wrong. Mm -hmm. This is so wrong. And there's something about South Boston. It's... You know, you've got Goodwill Hunting, you've got all these, you know, Boondock Saints, all these movies. I mean, how many places, how many people grow up in places that they make movies about, that they have all these, <laughs> yeah. the Departed, and, uh, right? You know, it's... It's my favorite movie. Oh, really? Honestly, yes. The Departed? Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, they, yeah, I mean, you, there was a couple of seasons where you could not walk down the street without a film crew. Uh -huh. like blocking traffic and whatnot. Yeah. And so I was, the sense of identity that I had yeah. growing up there Yes, and seeing it. Yeah, like, I like wrote that on the thing. I was like, I'm very prideful of Boston. Right, you know? right. And it's like, ah, from There's a lot of pride. I, exactly, exactly. And, and culture and things to attach yourself to identity-wise. Yeah. 
accent and <laughs> oh my gosh everything yeah yeah and to <clears throat> juxtapose the way I wanted to feel about South Boston and seeing just gross the, behavior yeah, yeah. The ignorance and yeah you know and it's not it wasn't a hundred percent but at that time you were it was very one way or the other you're mm -hmm. either with them or not and I was used to being with them but not yeah because I wasn't going to those schools right and it was just that was like the first cr crack in my thinking I mean I was raised in your identity I mean yes. 13 is such an age of oh my. like who am I right and oh yeah like being south, from South Boston, I can imagine at 13, like the parade and uh, the parade. Oh my God. It's still a huge thing, oh. right? It was still a huge thing for you. I'm oh sure. yeah. Oh yeah. It was like three blocks from my house. So, and, and, you know, being on Broadway and oh, man, doing, and, and being, you know, Irish Catholic oh, and man. there's so many things, right. Yeah. And, and then being at in th like 13, you're trying to figure out very We're, early where you stand politically in ways. Yeah, so. well, and I was just parroting everything my parents yeah. said. And they were, you know, eh, and Nixon got a bad deal. I'm like, now I look back at it, it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, realized, I, I realized I shouldn't just mouth. Oh, my God. I did. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and, it, yeah, it was wild. It was wild. Oh, man. But just... How old was your brother? My brother was a year older than me. Okay. And he didn't go to Boston Latin. He went to um, Boston Technical. And so that... Tech Boston? Tech Boston. I guess Is that's... Is that the same school? I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a long time ago. Right. It was like 45 years like ago. Like now there's a Tech Boston. So I'm like... Mm -hmm. It could very well be. Yeah. It could very well be. So, But he was out of the fray as well. Mm -hmm. um, and he was very much... He came home, he ran into his room and never came out. You guys never talked? No. About? No, he didn't. He didn't want to. Yeah. No, he, yeah, he was. Because <laughs> he was struggling himself, right? Like, who am I? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and where do I lie with yeah, and, these beliefs that are. And he still has a big fear of. He's still very traditional. He's, you know still going to church he's still very conservative and so he never asked the same questions I did mm, that's and interesting he he didn't I don't think he went to the bus stop with my mom I don't think that he went to her grade school he, I don't think he didn't do the same thing I did um, I don't know what I thought I was going to be able to do if something was going on mm -hmm. but yeah, I just felt like I had to be there. Yeah. And, yeah, fear. I just, that was like the undercurrent for the next four years. Interesting. Yeah. And I haven't really... When did that let up at all? Probably not. Yeah. I mean, it, eventually, right? People came to accept things the it, way they were. You know, I don't really remember because I started getting more involved in my school. Uh, the violence, the riots, and things like that only lasted for maybe a year or two, from what I remember. When people were like, you know, nothing's coming from this in terms of change. It was, yeah, I don't, they still, I don't know when they abandoned it, but they did kind of like let it go because it wasn't, wasn't working. Yeah. And, um... Their rioting wasn't working. The, no, no, like the, the desegregation. I mean, I have to say, I haven't really looked into the history f through books or anything like that. It was, I think it was just like too upsetting. And I didn't want, you know, I just, once I was out of that situation, I never went back to it. Mm -hmm. I never really looked at it. Um, and I have black friends now who I don't 
they probably have their own memories of that. Yeah. Of and we've never talked about it. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you should. Well, yeah. <laughs> you should. Oh, absolutely. I absolutely should. Yeah. And I haven't really returned to that in my mind since it happened mm -hmm. until this. Right. You know, it was just so different. Can I, I ask you, like, yeah. super personal? Oh, go for it. When did you know you were gay? Oh, um, Catwoman on Batman. Um, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Um, near 13? Near uh, this time? Near maybe? six That's what I'm or wondering. seven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was always boy crazy. Yeah. I had my first boyfriend when I was five years old. Um, you know, we would walk, hold hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I remember just thinking women were the most beautiful things in the world. <laughs> I just, yeah. When did you come out to your mom? Well, that's interesting. That, did you ever? That, God, that kind, well, and that's the thing about South Boston is like, you know, you don't name names. You don't really talk about things like that. Um, you know, my wife, we've been together for 38 years. And so they knew Katie. They knew my wife. But, they, but she was a friend. Yeah, oh, that, well, that was the whole thing. Um, <laughs> She was always introduced as my very, very good friend. <laughs> and Jeez. things got complicated. I mean, I was working towards, I would have told my mom, but she got Alzheimer's. Uh, yeah. And so, That's really tough. yeah. But my dad was aware. Yeah. Uh, we never, I never said anything. Actually, we had this conversation once where it was a conversation, but not really a conversation. Yeah. I would say, well, you know, Katie's such a big part of my life. Do you think I should say something to mom? And he's like, no, your mom loves Katie. Just leave it be. Yeah. Which I took so, also like, as. You know how they say moms have like the fifth instinct or something? Yeah. Do you feel like she like did know, but oh, yeah. she just like didn't want to say it? Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so. Similar to like, don't say gay, you know? Yeah, right. Sort of. Right? Sort of, yeah. Like, and. Um, I think she had gay friends yeah. that, I mean, it just wasn't really talked about. Mm -hmm. And so in relation to this, I'm just picturing, like, you know, you thinking of your identity in that kind of minority sense. Yeah. In um, relation to, right? oh yeah, like, feelings about hatreds towards others and... Yeah, I it was... Know. That's why I was asking about it. Mm. I don't... You know, I'm looking back at that time. In my high school, we did have gay kids, and it wasn't really a big issue. Yeah. Um, but in the neighborhood, definitely. It definitely was. You could not stand out. Mm -hmm. And that was another thing that I, back then, would never bring up. You know, I had my feelings. Yeah. And I had crushes. But I would never act on it. I would never say anything. Mm. You know, it was a very, I mean, very, very Catholic neighborhood back then. Right. And. Did you have friends that during this time were speaking out against, you know, older people who were of the opinion that desegregation shouldn't happen? Uh, no. No. It was I definitely mean, thirteen is really young. Yeah, it was it was that. a big united front at, at that activism level. Yeah, <laughs> right? like, yeah. Um, and y back then, it was you were pretty much just parroting what your parents said. Mm -hmm. You know that they they were the authority, and so you looked to them to see how they were reacting to things. And of course. very seldom, I mean, you might have questions or doubts, but it was never brought up. Yeah. It was a very different style of parenting back then. There was no talking back. There was no questioning. There was no doubting. It's like seen, not heard. Corporal punishment was, especially in South Boston, just the way things were. Mm -hmm. If you disagree with me, it, there's a paddle for that. There's a paddle. You had yeah. to go get the paddle. I had a hairbrush that was <laughs> my nemesis. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was... Right. 
just the way it was. You know, the whole idea that you don't hit your kids. No, that was not even a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a quick question. Hmm. Why is it important? You, you've spoken about this, that you repressed some of these memories or you didn't have the, the words to articulate it. Yes. Why is it important that you speak out about this now, 50 years later? Because we're seeing it again. Oh, we're seeing it again. It's like you look at Florida, you look at you know, neighborhood where they're not even allowing people to talk about racism. You're not even allowed to... Critical race theory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and also, I don't want that... I don't want anybody to have to go through what I did. I don't know anybody who, you know, people your age don't remember... And books being banned. Is yeah. That, that's what I'm thinking about right now. Yeah. Um, we didn't really have that, but it was like, I just, I felt like I didn't want this to get lost. Right. You want to tell this story because you don't want it to become like a thing that we're not talking about and therefore, right? Exactly. I mean, I wasn't allowed to talk about it back then. Mm-hmm. I wasn't allowed to think differently back then. And... So I don't want it to get lost. And those little kids on that bus, I think about them now. And how do they think of, think about me? Mm. You know, somebody who was there. I feel like I, I wish I could apologize and hug every single one of them. Apologize for what? For the way they were treated by these people that I called family. Mm. Yeah. Right. Being a by, like bystander guilt yeah. or something. Right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what I could have done, but I could have done more. Mm-hmm. You know, I could have smiled at them. But. Instead, you're like confused, right? And scared. Yeah, understandably. Fear, fear, fear. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's it, there's there's a certain shame, there's a certain responsibility to make up for what I didn't do back then. Um, I go out of my way to engender friendships with people who are different from me, and I do try to bring that curiosity. Um, Everyone's interesting. Everyone's got the same feelings. And I don't know why they didn't recognize that at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) For sharing. Moments left. Mm. You can tell yourself. This is not the way it's supposed to be. This is not right. And it's okay to feel that way. You're not betraying anyone by being appalled at what's going on around you. And smile at a face that looks different from you. Mm-hmm. You were like a test case, kind of? Yep. So 50 years later, what do you think? How did it go? And then is Boston, do you have hope for Boston's future? It was, I think, a dismal failure. I think that if the parents talk to the other parents from the other side of the city, and they both agreed that they didn't want their kids to go to schools far away from them. They wanted to be able to walk, have their kids walk home 
in the same neighborhood from their schools to their house. If they had joined forces, if they had come together as a group of parents saying, we're There's more a, proactive than reactive, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. We want everybody to have a great education, but we want it to be amongst, you know, friends or nearby. There's got to be another way around it. It was just they had no choice but to... They just took the choice, I guess, to make the adversary the kids and the parents and not the system. I hope for better things for Boston, but you see that undercurrent running so deeply. All we can do is, you know, deal with the people and, you know, give to the person in front of you, react to the person in front of you, be positive and kind. <laughs>